First of all, I'm gonna start with this crispy and juicy karaage Izakaya style fried chicken By the way, Izakaya is Japanese pub You might say I already know what Japanese fried chicken is Today I will share with you a secret technique that makes chicken extremely juicy You can make the crispy outside and fluffy juicy inside of the fried chicken that is served at Japanese Izakaya just like the professionals do Carefully remove the muscle from the chicken and cut it into bite-sized pieces like this Here, prepare water Add sugar And salt Mix well Marinate the chicken in this water for 30 minutes before seasoning Yes, this is the secret process I mentioned earlier Chicken becomes tough when the water evaporates during frying Pre-marinating the chicken in this liquid reduces the shrinkage of the chicken muscle fibers and keeps the chicken moist, making it juicy even after being fried in oil. My husband tried it and was impressed that it was the fluffiest and juiciest fried chicken he had ever eaten. After 30 minutes, cut dry each pieces of chicken with paper towel. From here, we season the chicken. Prepare beaten eggs in a separate bowl First, sprinkle salt and pepper Put grated ginger Grated garlic Oyster sauce Soy sauce Sake And a little sugar one egg is added for every 500 gram of chicken. Today's quantity is half, so half an egg is added. Mix well to allow the flavor to soak in throughout. Let's sit for 20 minutes to soak up the flavors. After 20 minutes, prepare to fry. In a separate bowl, mix equal amount of flour and potato starch. About 2 tablespoons each is fine. Mix before adding chicken Transfer the chicken to the bowl of flour, gently draining off the moisture Mix well by hand The key is to roll the chicken with the skin on the outside as if wrapping the meat with the skin before placing it in the oil Roll up any pieces that do not have the skin on them and put them in as well You can fry them in more oil or like me, fry them in less oil and turn them over halfway through Turn over after about 3 minutes Usually fried chicken made without soaking in water does not grow this large during the frying stage the water evaporates and they become small This time, the chicken is nicely puffed up into a round shape Evidence that the chicken is fluffy and juicy inside without losing any moisture Finally, you can fry them on high heat for 30 seconds to 1 minute each to crisp them up It's best eaten with mayonnaise Next one is oden Oden is good when it's cold, but even if it's not cold, it's a popular dish at izakaya because it goes very well with alcohol First, let's prepare konjac konyaku. Konjac is an ingredient that does not absorb flavor well, so fine incisions are made like this It's thick, so you can make a fairly deep cut When my husband ate oden, this incision is very good, he said since konjac has a distinctive smell, boil it once in boiling water If you boil it for 2 minutes and then season it, the initial smell will not bother you at all and it will be very tasty Drain off the hot water Next, make boiled eggs This is no problem if you make it after you start simmering your oden Also, since the eggs will be stewed in oden soup this time, do not worry about how well the yolks are cooked you can boil them hard Everyone has their own variations on what ingredients to put in oden But daikon radish is one ingredient that everyone includes Daikon soaked with flavor is an excellent dish Peel and cut into thick slices 
Make a crisscross slit to allow the flavor to soak in easily. This is chikwa boiled fish paste. This is my favorite. Cut into desired size. This time I cut into large izakaya like pieces. This is hanpen. This is also fish paste, but it's made with yams and other ingredients to give it a fluffy texture. It's much fluffier than chikwa. It also soaks up soup very well. Cut into triangles. This is called satsuma age. It tastes similar to chikwa, but the flavor is slightly different because it's deep fried. Add the konjak you just boiled. All ingredients are placed in a large pot. Daikon is the hardest to cook, so it's best to put it at the bottom. This is dried kombu. Knotted kombu for oden was sold at the supermarket, so it's added. Other popular ingredients include gobo wrapped in fish paste and thick fried tofu. It would also be delicious with potatoes or sausage. Try making it with the ingredients you have on hand. Add water. You can mix in the pot, but since I have already added the ingredients, mix the seasonings in a separate bowl. Put soy sauce, mirin, sugar, salt, dash powder, and oyster sauce. The key is to add oyster sauce. This gives it a very rich and deep flavor. Today I used bonito dash powder because kombi is used as an ingredient. Use your favorite dash powder or dash broth. Put this in the pot. Mix lightly. Bring to a boil. Reduce heat to low and simmer for one hour. When the eggs are shelled and ready, place them in the pot. There were so many ingredients that it almost overflowed during the cooking process, so I took out the eggs and hampen during the process and put them back in the pot later. After one hour, turn off the heat. It can be eaten immediately, but leaving it as is for an hour or so allows the flavor to soak in well. There was a little left over, so my husband had some the next day, and he said it tasted even better the next day, with even more flavor. Drink the soup with it, it's so tasty! It's perfect when eaten with a little karashi, Japanese mustard. Next, I'm gonna make izakaya style rolled omelette with dashi. Prepare the toppings before making the omelette. This is furikake made from cold roll. I hear it goes well with mayonnaise, so I'll mix it in. Today I use 3 eggs, sprinkle just a little dash powder, sugar, and water. Do not add too much water as it will make it difficult to roll. Stir well. A little water makes the egg roll fluffy. Over the pan. Add the egg mixture about this little bit at a time. It's fluffy and tasty when water is added, but it's still a little more difficult to roll than usual. I thought halfway through that I should have used a spatula, but I forced my way through with chopsticks. I managed to shape it by pressing it against the corner of the pan. Grated egg and radish is a standard topping for izakaya style egg rolls. It's really good with grated daikon on top of the egg and a little bit of soy sauce. This slightly spicy cold roll is great when combined with mayonnaise. It went so well with the egg rolls that my husband became seriously addicted to it. If you can get your hands on cold roll, I hope you will make it. Next, I'm sharing four kinds of screw dishes including yakitori. First, let's prepare shishito green peppers. Cut off the stems of shishito peppers. Make a slit so it won't explode when baked. Grilled shishito peppers are refreshing yet juicy and go well with yakitori sauce. I'll put them on screws. 
Next, prepare thin pork belly and wrap them around the cherry tomatoes. Any kind of thinly sliced meat would be fine. I think screwing the joint of the pork would make it harder to peel off. Sprinkle a thin layer of flour over the meat to prevent it from peeling. Next, we prepare the standard yakitori. Cut chicken thigh into bite-sized pieces. Cut the green onions into pieces this large and square them alternately with the chicken for a classic yakitori dish. It's tasty enough to omit the green onions and use only chicken. Place chicken skin side down and cook over medium heat until crispy. While cooking, make tsukune. Finely chop the onion. Combine with ground chicken. I will prepare the sauce later, so simply season with salt and pepper. Mix in potato starch to make it easier to shape. Knead well. You can substitute green onions for the onion. Turn over the yakitori from earlier. Reduce heat to low, cover and cook for 3 minutes. Make a long, thin shape like this and square it. Be careful not to make it too thick or it will be difficult to cook. Remove this chicken once. I saved the juice from the chicken and will use them later. Cook tomato meat rolls and tsukune. When the pork belly is brown, turn it over. The tsukune also got a nice brown color. Cover and let cook slightly over low heat. Overcook the tomatoes and they will become soggy, so cook them for 2 minutes and remove them when the pork belly is cooked through. Tsukune can be taken out if you like the onion crispy, but if you want them sweet, cook them some more. Finally, let's cook shishito peppers. Cook until brown and tender on both sides. Clean the pan and make the sauce. Put mirin, soy sauce, and sugar. Add the chicken juice you saved earlier. Heat a little and return the yakitori. Put the tsukune as well. Coat the meat with the sauce while simmering the sauce. Turn over and let the flavor soak in. Soak the tsukune in the sauce for a little longer. The sauce can be transferred to a small plate later and eaten with a little dipping. I don't want to cook the tomatoes anymore, so I slightly sauce the pork and remove it right away. Toast the shishito peppers with the sauce. Eat it while dipping it in plenty of sauce. Next, I want to introduce gyu tan, beef tan with special sauce. Have you ever eaten beef tan? This may surprise newcomers, but it's a very tasty and popular part of the meat in Japan. They are a little chewy, yet tender, and go extremely well with green onion sauce and lemon. Its popularity has grown rapidly around the world in recent years, and it seems to be hard to find. First of all, let's make the sauce that makes gyutan taste even better. Miss green onion. You can leave them raw, but this is a little spicy, so warm them up in the microwave for a minute or so. Once warmed, mix a little and add sesame oil. Add a little salt, black pepper, and lemon juice. Mix well and it's done. Let's cook the gyutan here. It's very thin, so it takes only a few minutes. You can omit the salt and pepper since you will be eating it with the sauce mentioned earlier, but sprinkle just a little bit of salt and pepper on one side only when cooking. This way it tastes even better. 
If both sides change color, it's done. Eat it with plenty of the sauce you just made. Add green parts of green onion for color. It's good with an additional squeeze of lemon. The last one is izakaya style salad. First of all, I'm making very tasty dressing for a special salad with soy sauce, rice vinegar, sesame oil, sugar, and white sesame. Mix well. The shiso really improves the aroma. Chop it up and add it to the dressing or pour it over the top when eating. You may use whatever vegetables you prefer. I use cucumber, tomato, cabbage, a little carrot, and lettuce. I'll add some shirasu here today. The shirasu does not smell fishy at all and as a savory flavor that is perfect for salad. You can use them as they are, but they are best crisped in a fry pan and then add it to a salad. Add a little sesame oil. Fry over a low heat for 5 minutes to crispy. The color changes like this. Tofu is also added to make it more izakaya like with tomato, shiso leaves, corn, and crispy shirasu. Pour over as much dressing as you like. It's also tasty, topped with fried lotus wood and other vegetables. The dressing will keep for about a week in the fridge. Please make it 